My research field is theoretical physics, uh, so quantum physics, uh, and the main area I've applied it to uh, uh, over my career has been in nuclear structure, so studying the structure of atomic nuclei using quantum mechanics, and that's still where my research grant money is coming in, and I'm part of the nuclear theory group at the University of Surrey. But the more interesting, more immediate uh, area I'm moving into now is something called quantum biology. So this is looking at biological systems, molecular biology, and trying to explain certain phenomena that need quantum weirdness to explain them. So things like genetic mutations can sometimes be driven by what's called quantum tunneling. A, a proton, a hydrogen atom jumps from one place to the other spontaneously, just magically disappears here and reappears there, which we see happening in the quantum world all the time. It may have an effect in biology. So this is, this is a new area bringing quantum physics and, and microbiology together. And I'm, I'm getting in on the act. Very often, well, certainly in initially working together to see where the problems are. So there's a biologist uh, at my university at Surrey who's looking at growing E. coli in, in solutions of deuterated water, heavy water, to see if their DNA structure changes. And then I, once I know what they're trying to do, I go away and do the calculation and, and work out what, if quantum mechanics is important, how would their result, how would this show up in their data? And then, and then we come together and then we write a nature paper and get very famous. Ultimately, the big, the big, big, big payoff, the big payoff would be um, quantum mechanics to explain cancer. Now that is, <laughs> actually it's not as crazy as it sounds. There are people who are being funded. Cancer research is, is in the doldrums in terms of finding the underlying mechanism. How does a, can a cell become cancerous? You know, there, are, there are several different mutations that have to take place and they're all very unlikely and yet you know, cancer is everywhere. Uh, and so there, are, there have been suggestions, very, very um, tentative and, and tenuous and speculative suggestions that quantum mechanics might play a role in, inside the, you know, the, the, the DNA in, in terms of changing mutations and, and, and making them cancerous. And so, yeah, that would be huge, wouldn't it? You know, just to explain ca cancer using quantum mechanics would be, wow. Not many. I think the person, the most prominent person I know of working on this is Paul Davies, uh, British physicist, theoretical physicist. He went to Australia for many years. He's now in, in, in America, in Arizona, and he he heads up an institute where they're they're doing quantum biology essentially, and they've been given a, uh, a U.S. government grant. They're one of I think twelve institutions in America who've been given grants to look at cancer, and his remit in his group is to look at quantum mechanics as a, as, a, as a driving mechanism in microbiology looking at cancer. So it's not that crazy. I think um, in this country science, public engagement of science has, has come in leaps and bounds in, in the last 10 years and so while there have been a lot of science communicators that always have been, it's, it's becoming more respectable as something that practicing academics are prepared to get in, uh, involved in. You don't have to leave your science to become a communicator. In the past that, had, that was necessary and if you became a communicator somehow that denigrated your standing in the academic world and the scientific world. Now that's, that's changed so I think it has improved. So people like me can still keep one foot in academia, we can still do research, we can still teach and then we can also do writing and broadcasting. As long as we can juggle the two and we don't let one take over the other then it seems that everyone is, is happy. And I think that's 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 wonderful position to be in and, and I encourage many other academics to, to, uh, to take the plunge. The scientific method itself, I think. Uh, not enough, you know, we could say, oh, it would be great if they could understand quantum mechanics, great to understand theory of relativity, but fun, but you know, so what? But for the public to understand how science works, reproducibility of results, that theories are not the truth, you know, they're only as good as the next theory that comes along or the data that confirms or dismisses them. So I think the scientific method would be brilliant if everyone knew how it worked.